Beautiful they may be, but don't be fooled by the gleam of paint or the shine of the exotic badges. These cars are driven hard. Turn one, there's an incident here already. The Vodka O Australian GT Championship returns to the Harbour City for round three. 2011 has so far gone to the dogs, with the pet food Mosler of Clark Quinn coming into the Sydney event with a narrow points margin over Mark Eddy at his Audi R8 LMS. Recent success for Dean Grant, sharing the driving duties with Daniel Gaunt, has thrown the Porsche duo into the mix, whilst the high horsepower Viper of Greek Creek, complete with new Jeep sponsorship, is tailor-made for the Eastern Creek layouts. Add to this the return of current champ David Wall and the debut of arguably Mercedes' best-looking sedan racer, and it's anyone's guess what lies at the end of 60 minutes of competition. The Vodka O Australian GT Championship. It's been a quick turnaround for competitors in this series. Round two just a week ago at Winton Motor Raceway. Hi, everybody. Greg Rustin, Cameron McConville with you at Eastern Creek for round three. We'll talk about this stunning new car and its race debut in a moment. But a driver making a welcome return to the series is Greg Crick in the Jeep-backed Dodge Viper GT3. I like the product. Um, I like the car. It's a bit different. You know, people think it's a big, cumbersome car, but it's actually a lovely car to drive. It's nicely balanced. Um, I like the, the, the style of the car and it was the only car in FIA GD3 that I could probably afford to buy and to run. They're probably the cheapest car in the field to run, I would imagine. The car that I have now is an FIA GD3 spec car. I bought it out of England. It was the car that won the 07 British Championship and uh, when we got it back here it was just a pile of rubbish so we stripped it to the bare chassis and it's had a complete rebuild in our workshops in Launceston. It's a simpler car than a lot of the European exotic cars. We don't have uh, traction control, we don't have paddle shifts, it's a much simpler car so there's a bit more work in driving it but it's also a lot cheaper to maintain, a lot cheaper to run. I've been thinking about approaching Chrysler for a couple of years. I went to them with a proposal and they jumped at the opportunity thankfully and uh, they, they came up with the innovative idea of, um, of wrapping the car to make it look like a Jeep. It's got the Jeep grille because this is the year that they're using to promote the Jeep in Australia, it's 70th anniversary of Jeep and uh, I think the result and um, colour scheme on the car is pretty spectacular and uh, represents pretty well what, what Chrysler Australia are trying to do. Let's take a closer look at the Eastern Creek layout now, Cam. 3.93 k's rusty. This track is absolutely perfect for a GT car. Loads of downforce, quite a wide rear tyre on them and a very, very fast lap set in qualifying here, a 130.8. But greasy conditions. Whoa, look at this. Mark Eddy in trouble here on the out lap. He had a good grip position for this race and as a consequence, as you can see here, now well down the order. He won't take up his regular grid spot. Should have been coming out of position three. It's Greg Crick controlling the field. It's a rolling start for this series. David Wall, the two-time champion, will start right beside him. Clark Quinn, Ian Palmer, Peter Hackett, well down there. So they've got to control the speed. The green flag will be near the start-finish line. Now, these drivers have been told over Race Management Channel to leave a gap at the second row of the grid. So doesn't appear to be that happening at this happened. point. That clearly hasn't happened, so that will be the subject of some talk in race control, but Crick leads them to turn one for the first time. David Wall in the Michelin back Porsche. You ride with him now through turn one. How tricky are these conditions? Not quite damp enough to run full wet weather tyres. It's exactly right. Every car on the Michelin control, slick tyre. The Porsche should be very, very speedy in these conditions, but just... Really gentle on the throttle out of turn two. He'll be a big short shift to third gear. Sequential gearbox and very busy at the wheel. And it's just the one VIP Pet Foods car today in race one yesterday. Some dramas for the Aston Martin of Clark's father, Tony Quinn. Mark Eddy moves by the Boylan Traffic Solutions Porsche. Peter Boylan doing a great job in the challenge class yesterday. And there's his main rival in the Bundy Rum entry. The Exige coming through the field. There's Ash Samadi making a move in another of the Moslers. We ride with Stig Richards now. This one hour race, you can change drivers. Look at the Mercedes moving its way through the field. Peter Hackett at the wheel. Now this car should be pretty speedy, Rusty, in these conditions. Obviously a lot lighter. Stig Richards with support from Bundy Rum there. 
So he's usually the pace setter in this class. Ooh. And I think that might be Palmer having a bit of a lose there. Great to have Ian Palmer returning to the series. Everyone finding their feet around this circuit given the, the grip. You can see again Palmer just dancing on the entry to 11 and 12. Very hard for the first couple of laps too with the safety car controlling the speed on the out lap. You can see how slow they were coming onto the start finish straight to start the race. So trying to get heat into a cold slick on a, on a greasy track like this, very, very difficult. The Mercedes SLS GT3 of Peter Hackett, a feature coming up for you on that car. We'll tell you more about it. It's its debut this weekend. Up the front though, look what's happening, the Viper. It, it really comes into its own at the end of the straight, whereas the Porsche at this point... Now, look at Wall, so deep under brakes, but he's wide. He holds it, though, through turn two, back into the lead. It's actually debatable, too, Rusty, whether there's more grip out wide at turn two there. So perhaps uh, Wall just using the extra grip offline to his advantage. But Greg Crick, very good in these conditions. He's hails from Tasmania and a lot of experience going back some 20 years in motor racing. Riding with Damien Flack now, he leads the challenge class in this race. A non-finisher in race one yesterday. And Peter Boylan trying to get maximum points for the class for the weekend overall. But this is a really stunning drive by Flack at the moment as he moves through the field here. Putting some pressure on Palmer. And down the inside, nice work. Just got to be so careful not to kiss the kerb on the inside. On board, the SLS GD3 with Peter Hackett, this car fresh into the country, listen to the onboard audio, fantastic, and just so, looks so well balanced too. They had uh, an assessment, if you like, of, of this car and what they should do with it under the current rules, and it was Alan Simonson, the sports car racer that drove it in Friday practice, but again, we see the Dodge Viper at the front here come into its own. Crick stretches the legs of that Viper GT3 and moves by David Wall. This guy's a two-time champion, David Wall, and has been running with the Brad Jones team in the endurance events, and will do that again in the V8 Supercar Enduros at the Island and Bathurst later in the year. Campaigning a car in the Fujitsu Series as well with uh, Tony Delberto Racing, so a lot of miles this year. But this is what's fantastic about GT racing, the different characteristics of the cars. The Viper, very quick in a straight line. The Porsche will monster it under brakes as he does back to third gear so just a little bit more nimble and you can place the car a little easier than the viper great group the wall racing team david's father des a many time australian sports sedan champion and he was in fact to take part in this race with richard kimber in another dodge viper but they're non-starters for this one and dean grant has been passed there by flack so good and here comes the mercedes the sls in the hands of peter hackett Moving by Dean Grant. Grant is sharing that car with Daniel Gorn. It's all going on here at Eastern Creek. Damien Flack coming under some pressure here from this magic-looking Mercedes SLS GT3. It's its first outing in Australia, the first race car of its kind to compete anywhere outside Europe. Your eyes don't deceive you. That's the uh, rear-mounted camera showing him what's behind, but he's already made the move on Flack. Let's find out more now about this fantastic car. Fantastic to be out in the, the first SLS GT3 outside Europe. We're very privileged and uh, you know we're really happy with the progress so far. It's remarkably similar to the SLS road car. You know, GT3 is a category that's based on road vehicles. The engine's pretty much the same, 420 kilowatts, but we've restricted and uh, you know everything else about the car is similar except carbon panels. So uh, you know we're really really pleased with the performance and the comparison with the road cars as well. 6.3 litre V8, so it's the AMG SLS 63 motor, which uh, AMG is famous for. Uh, our race weight uh, here in Australia is 1,465 kilos, I believe, and uh, in Europe it's 1,365. So we're carrying a little bit of weight to help slow us down to 09 spec, and we're also carrying a fair bit of ride height, 20 mil, zero to 100 figures, probably around three and a half, something like that. And uh, you know a big heavy car like that, it's uh, the braking performance, we're pulling about 1.7 G, so it's uh, you know quite remarkable for a sports car. Uh, this is the first race car that Mercedes AMG have produced since I think the 40s for customers, and uh, you know it just adds to the history of the mark. You know it's uh, such an exciting thing to be part of because Mercedes Benz. Uh, you know, was built around motor racing. The, the very first Mercedes-Benz ever built was built for motor racing, and uh, it's nice to be able to carry, carry that uh, heritage. 